When you use this technique, you never enter into that overload. But the reason you're not overloaded is because you're just not thinking. And yeah. so you're not actually learning. So that's just a complete waste of time. You yeah. may as well just like smash yeah. your face against I the agree. book for like three hours. Anytime you feel like, okay, I'm starting to get overwhelmed, stop, look at the map you've got, group it, simplify it, make it simpler. And then get to the point where you can look at it and think, okay, it's not overwhelming anymore. Then carry on. Every couple of months, I find some members in our I Can Study program who are active and supportive in our community. And I offer them some 30 minute free coaching sessions. Some of you do seem to really like my coaching style content. So I've decided to record some of these and post them on YouTube. Before we jump in, I'd appreciate if you give this video a like. And if you're interested in joining the full program yourself, then you can check out iCanStudy.com. There's a link in the description. My name is Ada. I'm a fourth year dental student from a to have very linear note taking and method of studying before. And now I don't seem to get that much benefit out of them. And I have been more open to switch to mind mapping. And But the problem I have is regarding my coding. Even though I do, for example, mind map, I still not having the coding that I desire. Yeah. And when you say that, are you talking about the fact that you don't have the retention or the depth or both? Yeah, uh, I think both. Yeah. Both? I think both. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. How long have you been working on the, your nonlinear note-taking skills? When school started, I think almost around September, October. Okay, so like a couple months, something like that. Yeah, but I haven't okay, been not... using it every day. Okay, not too long then, All right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, overall, given that you're relatively new, you've only been working on this for like a couple of months, and you said that you were previously very linear, right? You used to just write all linear notes. I think yeah. given that you're starting from a point where you used to be very linear, this is actually yeah. looking pretty I, reasonable. I to, yeah, I used to be very linear, but I will also used to do a lot of re-listening, not just rewriting, but also re-listening to the lectures, okay. because that was just my like main the, thing of studying. The, the double passive combination. Okay. I think overall, your method of note-taking is not that bad. When it comes to reading like, for example, getting a material from a book or from a lecture or from a note. I usually write the thing that I feel is the most important, for example, the topic. And I try mm -hmm. to, I don't try to group or chunk it. I just use, for example, I try to do arrows, but sometimes it's not the best way I use it. It's just, yeah. Do you do this across like the whole topic or do you do it like one concept at a time? I think I do it in chunks, like small, small increments. Oh. Okay, so you sort of do it segment by segment. Yeah. Do you ever feel like as you start getting deeper into the topic, it's, it gets harder to create a map that makes sense? Once I get a bit deeper and I see, for example, the subtopics or the explanation of the subtopics or I get some details, I just feel like they're at that point where my mind mapping starts to become that useful, start to become like... I'm doing okay. note taking just for the sake of it. It does. It's yeah. not okay. that much processing after that. Yeah. Okay. So there, there are two things that I think you should try, and I think these will help you straight away. Actually, uh, yeah, three things. The first one is at the moment you're going segment by segment. Let me, let me explain it this way. Let me just draw this out. When you read something from a book, you're gonna take you know one particular concept, and then that concept is now gonna be in your head. And then you think, well, how is this concept related to now the next concept? And then you might be able to create some kind of arrow. And then as you continue to expand out, you can add more arrows and more relationships and things like that. And then as you continue to progress, this map is going to have more things added onto it. And every time there's a new thing that's added on, you now need to think how it's all related to everything else. And so there's a lot for your brain to try to hold on to. Each of these arrows is something that your brain has to sort of hold on to in order to process. And when it gets too much, that's when you'll start feeling overwhelmed. And then now it doesn't even matter if there's any new content that comes in. You're not going to know how to think about it because each new piece of information has so many different possible things to think about that it's just overwhelming. That's not realistic. The reason this happens is because I think what, what's happening is that you are progressing through the mapping too quickly. And what I mean by that is that you're adding on new concepts before your existing structure is consolidated. So what has to happen is you need to go through the topic and you need to say, okay, well, this is, you know, here are some main ones that I think are important. And then you figure out what you 
think are the relationships that are there. And then you get to a point where you feel like, yes, this to me makes sense. And once you're at a point where you feel like this makes sense, now you're ready to add on a little bit more, like the subtopics and the subconcepts and additional details. And then you can add that on. One of the big things is you have to be grouping and chunking more. So at the moment, you're just doing individual. I can see this in your maps. And it's one of the clearest things to notice is most of your relationships are just between individual ideas. You've got a couple big groups here and there, yeah, it's but really, a lot of the relationships. It's, like, yeah. it's like flows. Yeah. Yes, like it flows, flow and which is not a bad thing. Flow is not a bad thing at all. But the idea is that your flow is just concept to concept to concept to concept to concept. So the idea is that when you know that there are things that are related together, instead of just saying, yes, they're related, they're related like that, you should say, okay, well, they're all related together. So therefore I need to chunk it and I need to group it. And then now you've just got one thing to work with instead. Oh, and then so this perfect. stuff. Yeah. And then that, and then now so, uh -huh. it might be like that. So this can help with the backbone, right? Yes. This directly helps uh -huh. with building that better backbone, a bigger schema. So it's about getting to a level where it's, it's simple. Um, it makes sense and it feels very simple. And that's where the mental effort has to be dedicated. Like that's where the thinking and the processing is about. It's like, how do I make this simple? How do I group it in a way that makes sense? I do this on a page, for example, I do the- Yeah, and you usually have to do it and redo collecting. it and redo it and redo it and redo it like multiple times. Mm -hmm. So I need to collect yeah. the keywords, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, you should collect the keywords yeah, first. Yeah, because this is, this is basically what's happening right now. Okay, right now what's going on is that as you continue to learn more, um, every time you increase the, the amount of concepts and keywords that you're thinking about or facts or details, what's happening is that you're getting more, more things to think about and you're getting continually, continually overloaded. And this is, this is what's causing you to feel overwhelmed because you're entering into cognitive overload. Yeah, and the thing that prevents that overload is going to be the effort spent on creating groups and, and getting to the point where it feels simple enough. So every time you feel overloaded, you spend your effort to group it and then try to simplify it. And then that will now make it so that your mental effort is lower. And now you're ready to take on the next piece of information. And then you do the same thing like yeah, that. I have a question. When I do, I have used previously, like just today, I used to collect keywords. Uh, but I get so many keywords and I just feel overwhelmed. Do I yeah, do just the just limit like, the keywords? Like just, very... just just don't don't collect as many. Just or you can do you can do two lists. Collect your keywords and then from your keywords make another list of like fewer keywords that you think are kind of the the more important ones. Mm, yeah, sounds great. For a beginner, I'd recommend twenty to thirty keywords to start with. Yeah, but if I collect keywords, I will. Just continue, continue, continue until I found the main, uh, the main keywords. So then I move to my map. I don't. Yeah. So so collect your keywords first. Keywords. Yeah. Yeah. Collect your keywords first, and then move on to mapping it together. Mm, because I do this simultaneously. You can do it simultaneously if when you are at a high enough skill level, but yeah. not yet. It's yeah, a bit that, hard. For it'll me. take at least a few more months. Yeah, it's going to be a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. But right now, what's I think the main thing is just what I've um, talked about here, which is the idea that um, you're you're overloading yourself before you're able to mm -hmm. simplify and group it. So you have to take in a little bit, group and simplify, take in a little bit, group and simplify, take in a little bit, then group and simplify. Yeah, makes sense. Right. The other thing, so that's two things. The first one was to um, actually spend time to pause before moving on spend time to pause, simplify, and then, and make it make sense. And then the second thing was you do that by being more active and deliberately grouping the information and actively trying to simplify it. And the third thing is don't do it in segments. At the moment you're studying like one segment chunk by chunk. That's going to be very hard to create groups. You want to do like broad topic first. And then you want to do the whole topic again, but at, at another level of detail and in another level of detail. So you want to be able to understand how the main ideas are formed and the main groups first at a simple level. And then you go through and do the topic again, but
but at a more detailed level. And then you go through the topic again and do it at like the most detailed level. You should never yeah. be working with high levels of detail at the beginning before you've got the whole picture. So I wouldn't be doing it chunk by chunk. I'd be doing it like layer by layer. Yeah, but how do I do the first layer? Do I do I still collect the keywords? It's the same process. There's, there's nothing that's different. It's the same process. You just don't go into keywords that you feel are too detailed. Oh, yeah. I dismiss them. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So if they're like, for example, and you'll see this. These are the ones. Yeah. So you can see this, right? Is that you can see here, there's basically one big group here. And then this is just split off into like a couple different concepts or facts. There's only one flow that goes group to group, which is this, which goes to this. It's just ah. that. That's the only group to group flow. And then everything else is just like a chain of ideas linking with each other. And especially here, this is just like a single chain. Uh, yeah, even my even my uh, retention or understanding started to decrease when I was in this stage of the mind map when I was doing this yeah. part. Yeah. yeah. So when there's not much grouping, it affects your memory. So when I look at this, I can tell that the thing that will probably be the easiest for you to understand is probably this thing, this here, including this thing. That's probably going to be the the strongest for you to understand. You probably can remember this part as well, this part here. And then maybe also this bottom part. And then this part was going to be very weak. I think this part will maybe be weaker as well. And you might forget some of the ones that are across here. But also the other thing is that this group and this group are very similar. It's function divided yeah, into it's components function. leading to cell products. So that's actually a repeat. So mm -hmm. basically what you're saying is that the concept that is talked about, like the flow of information, the logic of this is the same as the logic of this. Yeah. And so there's probably a way that you could group it that includes it so that you don't have to create a duplicate. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be just creating a duplicate. So there's probably a simpler way of representing this. What about in the one that I have written notes, like there is more linear, not this one. Uh, this you mean one. this one? The th yeah, the, yeah. Like this. Yeah, so this one, I, I would expect that you have very low retention on most of this because there's just not much of a network. There's not really any grouping. There yeah. doesn't seem to be much processing. Do like you've got a this? table here. It's very yeah, simple. you fix it just by doing what I've, to I've told you. Yeah, the yeah, reason I you're mean, doing but, this is because, yeah. here's the thing, you're doing this in this way because you're not stopping yourself from doing it in this way. You're letting yourself do it, mm. yeah. right? It's, for you, it's like it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. So it just has to become unacceptable. But do I do, for example, um, when I do this way of learning, do I do this every single time or? Yeah, this? pretty much. Because it's yeah. very overwhelming when I do it this way. It's overwhelming yeah, because it's the different. The cognitive load. Yeah, it's different. I want you yeah. To, yeah, but think about it this way, is that when you learn this way, it's overwhelming when you're learning the technique. But then once you know how to do it, it's much less overwhelming because the technique directly is designed to make you less over overwhelmed and overloaded. So if you look at this graph again, when you use this technique, you never enter into that overload, mm -hmm. right? When you learn using the previous technique, you are neither overloaded, but the reason you're not overloaded is because you're just not thinking. And yeah, so you're not exactly. actually learning. So that's just a complete waste of time. Yeah. You may as well just like smash yeah, your face against I the agree. book for like three hours. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Agree. So the reason people find effective learning difficult is because they're used to completely wasting their time, which is easy. It's like saying studying is harder than watching Netflix. It's like, yes, but one of them actually, you know, like you have to do the work. But if you try to increase your attention and increase your memory by using your old method, you'll find that you just can't. There's just a limit. The only way to overcome that is through repetition and repetition and repetition and repetition, which is even more of a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So by using this method, we can make sure that we are never entering into that point where we're really getting that overloaded. And therefore it takes mental effort. It takes effort to bring it down here and then here and then here and then here. Each of these moments, it takes effort to process and simplify that information, but it should never get overloading and like make you feel overwhelmed unless you're leaving it too long. If you've got, you know, nine different concepts and now you're trying to simplify it, you've left it too long. That's why you want to simplify the information as you go. You take a concept, you simplify it. You take a concept, you simplify it. The big picture is forming all the time. But if you just like focus on like one specific little network of information, like if you look at your mind maps, like this one, if you just, just focus on like this part here for like 20 minutes, 
And then you zoom out and you think, okay, well, how is that related to everything else? Now it's overwhelming because you've got a lot that you need to try to integrate with everything else. But instead it should be like, okay, I've added this one and I've added this one. Now you zoom out. How does that relate to everything? Now I've added this and then this. How does that relate to everything? If you just continue to integrate it with the big picture at every step, it's not very overwhelming. But what if there are just details? So it depends on the type of detail. A lot of details, they can be made much easier and it can make more sense just by thinking about how you could make it make more sense. So you have to think, okay, if I feel like I'm going to forget this and if I feel like it's very detailed and technical, how could I think about it to make it more obvious? Is there a way that I can connect it or make it more relevant and make it part of the big picture so that I don't have to just rote memorize it? And you try, and sometimes you can, and then sometimes you can't. And if you can't, then that's the type of stuff that you put onto your flashcards, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you can make a note of it on your mind map as well. Sometimes sometimes you can just leave it out completely if you don't want to mess up your, your map. But that's the, that's the way that you do it. You make a distinction about what you can reasonably make easier to hold on to and fit as part of your network. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it should sense. be in that order. You have to first try, and then if you can't, then you put it into your flashcards. You should never just like put it onto your flashcards to begin with because you assume you can't because it just looks technical because yeah, you'll never know until you try. Yeah, but how would it be, for example, in this case? Like this one? I've typed the types. Do I? Yeah, for this example, part? yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this part here is not as, I mean, first of all. It's not diff yeah, it's not detailed, but it's just. Yeah. yeah, so this part is not detailed. Yeah. So what, what are you asking? I'm just asking. For example, I group the, the, the types only, or do I group also the sub parts? You group everything yeah. that can be grouped, you should group. You should group. Mm -hmm. You just think about it this way. When you group it and simplify it, your memory gets better always for anything. Mm -hmm. So if you can, always, you always should. Mm -hmm. And it's only if you can't, then you put it onto flashcards or something. Yeah. Anytime you can for any kind of information, you should always try to find a way that makes you able to group it and simplify it and connect it. Because when you can't, and often can't versus don't want to get confused. Like, I think this is a good example here. This information, you can, but you didn't. This yeah. here, Agree. you could, but you didn't. So it's about what you say is acceptable versus not acceptable, yeah. right? This as well. There's a little thing here. There's a little thing here. There's a little thing here. This could all be integrated, right? Yeah. This here, these are just three bullet points. They could have been integrated. They could have been grouped. They could have been simplified, but you have to make yourself do it. I mean, I think another thing is that once you start grouping and simplifying, you'll start realizing how much simpler these topics can be. And you'll realize that a map like this shouldn't be a map just by itself because the topic is just too small. Like this mm. should actually be joined into a bigger topic that you're creating the map for. Yeah, I haven't finished the, only... the topic though. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, but then th that's another thing, right? Like, like I said, don't do it chunk by chunk. If you haven't finished the topic, then I should be able to see which parts are not finished. But at the moment, it looks like most of it has kind of been fleshed out. Like maybe if there's another thing here or a whole other type of reaction or a whole other type that hasn't been put on there, that's how it would get larger. But if that is how it gets larger, it should already be there. Like you should already have a basic skeleton of that yeah. already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So three things, so you just do big picture at a time. And then when you go through the information, take time to pause, to process, simplify and group the information and always try to group and simplify and connect it whenever you can. Try to avoid getting to the point where you're actually getting overloaded. Anytime you feel like, okay, I'm starting to get overwhelmed. Stop. Look at the map you've got group it, simplify it, make it simpler, and then get to the point where you can look at it and think, okay, it's not overwhelming anymore. Then carry on, add more ideas to it. And when you start feeling, okay, I'm getting overwhelmed again, stop, look at your map, group it, simplify it, try to make more sense of it. Right. And that, again, that's going to take effort and it's going to, it's going to take a lot of thinking, but number one, you will get better at it as you continue to practice it. And number two, if you don't do this, your memory is not going to be very good. So it's kind of a decision. <laughs> do you want to take it easy yeah. and then have you know, like bad memory or do you want to spend effort and just be better? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Any final questions, any final comments uh, before I we can, wrap up? I, I would like to uh, talk about, uh, discuss the topic uh, regarding study scheduling, if it's possible. Here's the thing that's really important is that the quality to which you study it the first time is going to affect how much more revision you need to do. 
So if the first time you've studied it, you're focused just a lot on just like random little low level details, that's not going to be very efficient because now the hardest part, which is the high level understanding, that's what you have to do your revision for. And because your high level understanding affects your low level understanding, you're kind of losing on all fronts, which is why when you first study it, you want to have a really strong high level and mid level understanding of it. And even if you don't have all the little details, that's actually fine because that's the easiest thing to do revision on and even cram last minute. Does that make sense? Because you look confused. I am confused. I don't see what how you confused do about? that, for example, the scoping of the subject. Which? Yeah, I feel like I don't know how to do the scoping of the whole entire subject. So when you say you, you don't have certainty, what part do you not have certainty about? Or is it a general feeling of uncertainty? I can say general because I don't, I don't see how, how should I be doing it? Okay. I want you to think about doing it and then just run through in your head what you think you would do. Step one, step two, step three. For example, I have, I have one subject, which is yeah. relatively small in exam. And the material I have is just some notes of a transcript, supposed transcripts of the professor. and. It's not like, for example, the material I have, it doesn't have headings. It's just linear okay, that's notes fine. and I'm sure. just thinking, how do I do that, for example? Okay, what, do you, what would you do? I think I would just look for keywords, like key, okay. for example, the, the headings or, for example, let's say the yeah. main. I have done this before. That's a problem. Yeah. But I haven't Why is that a problem? I'm, I'm just having difficulty because I'm imagining the the file I have to learn this, yeah. con this yeah. material and it's just not done properly. And this is the thing that it's just making me feel the certain way. You understand? Yeah. So if you get that file and then you, yeah. do you, do you think you could just pull out keywords from that file? Yes or no? Yeah, I, I can. Okay. Or I think it should be more detailed. I have done the co like keywords collection, but I have done the, like the, the, for example, when I'm here talking about teeth, I'm just thinking about caries and I'm not, for example, periodont, I'm just thinking like the, yeah. the very big, big. I don't think you have a confusion about what you are meant to do. You have confusion about whether what you do is going to be successful or not. You have fear of failing and fear of making the mistake. <laughs> I also think I have the fear of knowing how to do it, of not knowing how to do it as well. But you're explaining what you do and it sounds fine. Like I just go through the process. It sounds fine, but I don't know why I haven't found it that useful. Mm -hmm. Is that different to how you've tried it before? Yeah, it's different. Yeah. So you had a method that wasn't giving you good results because the method needed to be improved. Yeah. So, and that's, that's very, that's like very normal. It's very logical, right? Yeah. If the process isn't working, it's not going to give you a good outcome. So now we have improved the process and with this improved process, you should get better results. And it's probably not going to fix absolutely everything, but you will get better results and you're going to find it more ah. effective than it was before. So now I understand. So for example, you're saying I should collect the keywords, but also process, chunk them and simplify them. This is the way I should be doing it, right? Yeah. So the, the things that I told you to do, like don't do it segment by segment. Don't do it mm. like, don't do one part of the topic, collect the list of keywords for the whole topic, create a smaller list of keywords that's make, that's easier to work with. That's across the whole topic and then map it out as you're mapping pause. Anytime you feel like every couple keywords, pause, simplify it, group it, make it make more sense. Then add on the next set of keywords, pause, group it, simplify it, connect it, and then continue to do that again and again until you finish that list. Now you can add on the other keywords that you missed from that list. But again, every couple keywords, pause, simplify, group it, fit it into the big picture. That's your new process that you should be using. And if you do it that way, most of the problems you faced before, you probably won't have them. Mm -hmm. I should definitely try this. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes, it makes sense. What was the, th like, what was the thing that you, the, the perspective that you were having that stopped you from understanding what I was talking about? I think it was like a fear of not understanding, for example, the keyword and not knowing what to do with that. When you feel uncertainty, you have to understand where the uncertainty comes from. You, you can, you can think of it like this. 
there's a certain amount of information that you need to try something, okay? Mm-hmm. And then there's a certain amount of information you need to be able to do it correctly. If this is the information that you need, and then this is your, like, as we increase the amount of information, the level of certainty that we feel doesn't just go up linearly, mm-hmm. right? At the very, very beginning, because we don't know anything, there's a very high level of uncertainty. So low level of certainty. And as you get a little bit more information, we will reach a certain point of certainty where we now have enough information to give it a go. If we continue to gain more information about this, it may feel like what will happen is like this. And then we will reach a point, you know, where we will be able to do it and not make any mistakes and be successful. But this is not actually what will happen because the way you have to get the information is through the experiment and practice. So once you are at the level where you feel like you can try and get it wrong, that's the point at which you should just try because that's the thing that is going to then take you to the point where you can get it right. But if we get a certain amount of information and then feel like, okay, well here I feel, you know, I feel uncertain in this period. And therefore what I try to do is I try to just increase and ask more questions and worry about not having enough information. What ends up happening is just like this. Our level of certainty goes down because all we're doing is thinking about more and more and more things that we have to worry about, not actually knowing how that actually works in the real world. I think you have enough information about the process to try it. What the uncertainty that you're feeling is that when you try it, you don't know how to make sure you do it correctly. And if that's the uncertainty, that means that the first step is to just try it and then see, right? So this is this is a very common pattern that we see. We call it information over experimentation. It's a tendency of some people when they feel like they're uncertain, they respond by trying to get more and more information about this. And they put off the experimentation because it's driven by a fear of not being able to do it correctly. And that actually stops them from improving. I can relate. (laughs) Yeah. I felt like you could relate. Okay. So that's probably a more important thing. You'll see this whole explanation of what I just talked about. That's in your diagnostic report. That'll be in your diagnostic report as well. (laughs) Okay. I think a few things for you to try, you know, let me know how it all goes, but actually your only fundamentals one, but your nonlinear note taking, I think is better than I would expect for fundamentals one. I have been told to move to fundamentals too, because previously, before joining I Can Study, I used to do note taking. But after I joined and I tried a little bit of mind mapping, I was able to not get that and to not get the benefit of linear note taking anymore. I don't know why I felt this way. So linear note taking probably never had any benefit for you. The only thing that changed was you started realizing that it's not having a benefit. Exactly. Yeah, your technique is higher than I would expect for Fundamentals 1. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, good luck. We'll be in touch. Thank you. And um, thank you very yeah, much. have a good rest of your day. Thank you.